Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Wednesday, September the 16th. Today is the day the Church recognizes the life of St. Cyprian of Carthage, pastor and martyr. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make melody with all my being. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth, that your beloved ones may be delivered. Give salvation by your right hand and answer me. Our New Testament reading today is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Okay, that's a red ring. Sorry about that. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and, if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you indeed were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Slaves, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Our book of Concord reading is not next. Uh, about St. Cyprian of Carthage. Cyprian, lived from AD 200 to about 258, was acclaimed bishop of the North African city of Carthage around AD 248. During the persecution of Roman Emperor Decius, 
Cyprian fled Carthage but returned two years later. He was then forced to deal with the problem of Christians who had lapsed from their faith under persecution and now wanted to return to the church. It was decided that these lapsed Christians could be restored but that the restoration could take place only after a period of penance that demonstrated their faithfulness. During the persecution under Emperor Valerian, Cyprian at first went into hiding, but later gave himself up to the authorities. He was beheaded for the faith in Carthage in AD 258. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is our continuation on Article 5 of the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, beginning in paragraph 177. These things are so plain and so clear, we wonder how the insanity of the adversaries is so great that it calls them into doubt. The proof is clear. Since we are justified before God, not from the law, but from the promise, it is necessary to attribute justification to faith. What can be opposed to this proof unless someone wishes to abolish the entire gospel and the entire Christ? Christ's glory becomes more brilliant when we teach that we make the most of him as our mediator and atoning sacrifice. Godly consciences see that the most abundant consolation is offered to them in this doctrine. They see that they ought to believe and most firmly assert that they have a reconciled Father for Christ's sake and not for the sake of our righteousness. Yet they also see that Christ aids us so that we are able to keep the law as well. The adversaries deprive the church, excuse me, the adversaries deprive the church of such great blessings as these when they condemn and work to wipe out the doctrine about the righteousness of faith. Therefore, let all good minds beware of consenting to the godless counsels of the adversaries. In the adversary's teaching about justification, no mention is made of Christ and how he ought to set him against God's anger, as though we were able to overcome his anger by love, or to love an angry God. In regard to these things, consciences are left in uncertainty. For if they think they have a reconciled God because they love and keep the law, they will always doubt whether they have a reconciled God. This is so because they either do not feel this love as the adversaries acknowledge, or they certainly feel that it is very small. Much more often they feel that they are angry at God's judgment. They feel he oppresses human nature with many terrible evils, with troubles of this life, the terrors of eternal anger, and so on. When, therefore, will conscience be at rest? When will it be quieted? When, in this doubt and in these terrors, will it love God? What else is the doctrine of the law but a doctrine, excuse me, doctrine of despair? Ugh. Sorry about that. Let any one of our adversaries come forward to teach us about this love, how he himself loves God. They do not at all understand what they say. They only echo just like the walls of a house, the little word love without understanding it. Their teaching is confused and shadowy. It not only transfers Christ's glory to human works, but also leads consciences either to arrogance or to, dis to despair. But our teaching, we hope, is readily understood by pious minds and brings godly and wholesome consolation to terrified consciences. Whereas the adversaries mock that also many wicked people and devils believe, James 2.19, we have frequently said already that we speak of faith in Christ, namely of faith in the forgiveness of sins, of faith that truly and heartily assents to the promise of grace. This is not brought about without a great struggle in human hearts. People of sound mind can easily judge the faith that believes we are cared for by God, that we are forgiven and heard by Him. It is something that surpasses nature, for by itself the human mind makes no such decision about God. 1 Corinthians 2, 14-16 Therefore, this faith of which we speak is neither in the wicked nor in devils. Furthermore, if any learned person objects that righteousness is in the will, and therefore it cannot be attributed to faith, which is in the intellect, the reply is easy. In the schools, even such persons acknowledge that the will commands the intellect to agree with God's word. We say also quite clearly, just as the terrors of sin and death are not only thoughts of the intellect, but also horrible movements of the will fleeing God's judgment, so faith is not only knowledge in the intellect, but also confidence in the will. In other words, it is to want and receive that which is offered in the promise, namely reconciliation and the forgiveness of sins. Scripture uses the term faith this way, as the following sentence of Paul testifies in Romans 5.1. 
Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Furthermore, in this passage, to justify means, according to court language, to acquit a guilty person and declare him righteous. But this happens because of the righteousness of another, namely of Christ. This righteousness is communicated to us through faith. Therefore, since our righteousness in this passage is the credit of the righteousness of another, we must here speak about righteousness in a way different than in philosophy or in the civil court. There we seek after the righteousness of one's own work, which certainly is in the will. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.30, He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness in sanctification and redemption. And in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. But because Christ's righteousness is given to us through faith, faith is righteousness credited to us. In other words, it is that by which we are made acceptable to God on account of the credit and ordinance of God, as Paul says, faith is counted as righteousness, Romans 4, 3, and 5. Although, because of certain hard-to-please people, we must say technically, faith is truly righteousness because it is obedience to the gospel, for it is clear that obedience to the command of a superior is truly a kind of distributive justice. This obedience to the gospel is credited for righteousness. So only because of this, because we grasp Christ as the atoning sacrifice, are good works or obedience to the law pleasing. We do not satisfy the law, but for Christ's sake this is forgiven us, as Paul says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8.1. This faith gives God the honor, gives God that which is his own. By receiving the promises, it obeys him. Just as Paul also says, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, Romans 4.20. So the worship and divine service of the gospel is to receive gifts from God. On the contrary, the worship of the law is to offer and present our gifts to God. However, we can offer nothing to God unless we have first been reconciled and born again. This passage, too, brings the greatest comfort, as the chief worship of the gospel is to desire to receive the forgiveness of sins, grace, and righteousness. Christ says of this worship, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. John 6.40 And the Father says, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Matthew 17.5 the adversaries speak of obedience to the law, but they do not speak of obedience to the gospel. We cannot obey the law unless we have been born again through the gospel. We cannot love God unless we have received the forgiveness of sins. For as long as we feel that he is angry with us, our human nature runs away from his anger and judgment. If anyone should object that this view of faith, which desires those things offered by the promise, becomes confused with hope, we will answer as follows. Hope expects promised things, and hope and faith cannot be separated in reality. Such needless debate takes place in the schools. The epistle to the Hebrews defines faith as the insurance, expectatio, of things hoped for, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Yet if anyone wants a distinction between faith and hope, we say that the object of hope is properly a future event, but that faith is concerned with future and present things. Faith receives the forgiveness of sins offered in the promise in the present. And we'll pick up from there tomorrow evening. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oops. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord. To comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your servant Cyprian boldness to confess the name of our Savior Jesus Christ before the rulers of this world and courage to die for the faith he proclaimed. Give us strength always to be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.